Hey y'all, in this video, I'm gonna make a program to display these text titles for me when I go to sections. Right now what I'm doing is just like manually pulling each letter in and putting them together, which is fine, but I can write a program to do that. And I've kind of already prototyped one out that looks a little bit like this, where I've pulled in these letters into their own individual costumes and done some other kind of uh, messing around with things. And what it lets me do is if I click the play button up here, it gives me an effect like that. So this is just kind of the prototype. This is the first one I was doing to try and figure out how all this stuff works. Now what I want to go do is go and do this kind of for real. So that's going to be what this video is about. And it's going to be a little bumpy because I don't totally know what I'm doing. But I think it'll be fun. So here we go. And don't feel like you have to follow along with this. And yet, and don't, and I, I'd recommend not trying to do this at the same time because I'm definitely trying to figure things out as I go. Once we've done it, once we've got it figured out, we can go through and do it together without having to go through all the rigmarole of trying to figure out how it works. So here we go. All right, so to start with, I'm just gonna get rid of Scratch Cat here. And the thing that I know that I wanna do is I need all the letters. And I'm gonna pull in uh, just a single letter to start with. So I'm gonna grab this A. Ooh, actually, you know, this has, maybe we do glows. Because when I'm looking at this, this set of block letters has a through Z, but it doesn't have numbers in it. But this glow has A through Z, but it also has zero through nine, which are the numbers that we can use to make all the numbers. This story also doesn't have numbers. I wonder why they didn't put numbers there. <clears throat> hmm. It's kind of a bummer because I kind of like the numbers. You know what? I, I do like the I do like this this block A. I like the look of these letters better. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick these because I don't know that I need numbers. I'm probably gonna end up needing numbers at some point, but I'm gonna deal with that when I get to it. So I'm just going to grab an A. And now this is something that took a little while to figure out. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to seem a little bit odd to start with. So this is something that's going to take a little getting used to, I think. But it's kind of an advanced technique that I just learned the other day. But I really like it. So I'm going to rename this sprite from block A to just letter. And I should see it change down here. And now what I want to do is go to costumes. Because what I need to have happen is instead of coming down here and adding each individual letter this way, where if I added a B here, where they show up in this palette down here, I need all the letters to be in a single sprite. So I'm gonna get rid of this B, and the way that I'm gonna do this, if I click on this letter, and I come over here, and let's go look at the events, and when sprite clicked, and just grab looks, and switch to costume. So switch the costume right now. There's only block A in here. That's the only sprite that's in here. That's the only thing that this lets me see. But if I come here under costumes and in this section, if I add the sprite from here, which says choose a costume, not choose a sprite, and come down here and grab the B this way, which is, there's way more of them now because it's all of the sprites individually or all the images individually. If I click B here, a and B are now both in this same letter. And what that means, if I come back to code, if I click here now, I can switch to A and B. And you can see it change, whoops, maybe you can't. If I click on it, then it would. Click, no, click the flag, here we go, there we go. A, B, click the flag, I can click here too, and make it go. But so what that'll let me do is, now I have capability of loading a single sprite, the single letter sprite, and having access to all of the letters inside there. So I could do something like this, where if we go grab a, an event loop for a forever, and we just wanna go, I'm gonna get rid of this for a second. We'll pull down here, we're gonna grab next costume. As soon as I find next costume here in looks, there's next costume, and then let's wait for a second so that it has a little bit of time to think about things. I'll just put this at 0 0.4, why not? And hit go. Now it's gonna flip back and forth. So this is all the same sprite. If I was trying to do this with two different sprites, it like there's not a great way to do that that I found. So now I want to do is I'm just I need all these letters. So I'm just gonna go through and make a sprite that has all of those letters in it. Um, which is gonna be a little bit boring, so I'm gonna fast forward through it. Okay, so that's all the letters. And now I can click and see each individual costume here. There's all kinds of stuff you can do in here. Like if I wanted to affect the way that D looked, I could do that. Like I can paint on it. I can add more text. I can do whatever. Oh, we could add text. We could make our own versions of these. Does that have fonts in there? Oh, sans serif. 
Oh, it's got different fonts in there. Look at that. Okay, that's cool. Uh, we'll play with that at some point. What's, what's this look like? Hang on. P. Oh, there's how we can make all of our numbers and stuff. Hey, we make different fonts and different colors. Oh, that's cool. Okay, we'll play with that at some point too. Okay. Uh, hopefully there's an undo. Yeah, undo. Cool. There we go. So I didn't change the costume name for any of these things. So it still says block B. The costume is block A. Costume is block B. These are all under the letter though. So now I should be able to do this. And if I wait every, eh, let's do 0.1 because there's a whole bunch of them now and hit go, it's just going to loop through the entire alphabet for me. So now I've got one sprite that has the entire alphabet for me. And the first thing I'm going to do now actually is save that. So I'm just going to do file, save to your computer, and that's going to save off this program, which there's nothing in that program other than this little loop, but this sprite should be in there too. I'm going to verify that to make sure. Okay, so now what we want to do. Okay, so now the thing that I need to do is I need to make multiples of these. And I want to be able to make them so that I can address each letter individually, or I can, I can make each letter do its own thing individually, but I need them to all be in the same sprite. So we've got the same sprite thing handled. And what I think we're going to end up doing is I'm going to take this forever out. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to go when this sprite is clicked for now. This is not what I end up with the final way that we do this stuff, but this is the experimentation that I need to do to kind of help me get down the path to where we actually need to go. Lots of this stuff is not knowing exactly what you're going to end up doing. It's knowing where you want to go, and then you kind of have to push forward a little bit to try and find how to get there. And sometimes you do different things. Sometimes you do things that don't work. Sometimes you do things that do work, but then they don't work later. It's kind of a back and forth. But this is going to be a part of that that I know. I know that clicking on Sprite is not going to be what I want to do in the long term, but it's what's going to help me for right now. Because what I want to do is when I click, I want to create a clone. And just to see it, I'm going to get a motion and I'm going to move it to a random position and then create a clone. So now if I click the Sprite, I can actually I can click here, right? Yeah, there you go. So now there's letters going all over the place, right? The E, which is what the current costume is, is showing up whenever we do it. So now what we can do, I hope, is if we go look at look, and let's see, let's go switch to next costume for now. Again, I just want to see stuff happen. I'm not trying to solve. I just, want, I just want to see things change. So there's F, there's G, there's H, there's I, there's J, there's K, L, M, N. Perfect. So now I've got a couple of decisions to make for how I want to move to the next step because things that I need to do that I know of right now are I need to be able to set up the letter so that uh, how can I click on this stop you start going there we go oh if I click on it it moves that's hysterical hang on wait but I need the I want the text to be able to go across and then across and then across like we need to have the lines of text and then the other thing that we need to do is be able to choose which letter we want to put in there, right? Because I don't want to just have it go next letter, next letter, next letter. Like I need it to be specific letters. I think the thing that I'm going to do first is the positioning because I think that's going to be a little bit easier to make it see how things are, how things are working. So let's work on that. So instead of random position, Let's do this. I'm going to roll this back off and we are going to go to events and I'm going to go to when clicked because I want to make this happen. So when I click go, it's going to it's going to do the thing for us. So when clicked, I want the first letter to show up about here. And what's cool is when I move letters, you can see these numbers here change. These are the coordinates. These are the, the, the positions that the sprite or the letter is going to show up on. So this X is for the side to side and Y is the up and down. So X with a number of minus 180 and Y of 76, which Y, let's go up to 80. There you go. So they're even numbers. It puts this letter right there. And if I go to motion, there's this go to X, Y. So here's our X, Y, and it actually pre-fills 180 and 8 for us. So if I bring this here, this is now telling this sprite to go when I because uh, we're on this sprite, when I click the green flag, it's going to 
take the sprite to those coordinates. So if I move it down here and then click the green flag, it should go right back to that position. So it's always just gonna start right there, which is what we wanna have happen. Now, next phase. I want to move it next, I think. Do you wanna do the letters next or do you wanna do, and this is, this is another thing that we'll kind of get into a little bit, right? Is some amount of, while I'm doing one thing, I know there's a couple things that I need to do next, or there's two things that specifically that I know that I need to do next. So which one of those do I want to do? And it can be a little paralyzing sometimes. Be like, ah, I don't know which one's the right one to do. And the answer is they both have to get done. So you try and figure out which one is going to be the easiest one to tackle or the least complicated one to tackle. And if you can't really figure it out, you kind of just pick one and go. Um, I still think I like, or you, or you figure out which one's going to help you see what's the next step is going to be easier. And I think being able to see the letters move is going to help me see the letters change because they won't be sitting on top of each other. So I'm going to stick with that idea of making the letters move. So this is where we're going to get into some of the variables. And so this is where we're going to be, this, so this is where we're going to get, so this is where we're gonna get into some of the variables because what I need to have happen is as we add more letters, I don't want the letters to always be on this position. So I'm gonna not, I'm gonna start off by not using a variable. And we're gonna we're gonna do what in other programming languages would be hard, called hard coding this. So I'm not gonna try and solve for the overall thing that we're doing yet. I'm just going to make it go as simple as possible with as few blocks as possible to do what I want to do. So here we're going to do this and then we're going to go get this backdrop. Oh, sorry, get this looks. We're going to switch to costume and we're going to go ahead and start this all the way through. So what, what I want to do is I just want to say hello. Ooh, there's two E's in there. That may be bad. There's an H. H. I'm going to make it say hello. So now if I do this and I bring this down here, the U should move up here, but it should also turn into an H. There you go. And then what we want to do is we're going to change to, we're going to move to here. So this is going to be 107, 18. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep these in the same order. So let's go to looks, switch to costume, H. Now we can choose one of those E's. I'm going to go ahead and clear that other E real quick. I have two E's there. I don't know why we have two E's. That should go away. There we go. I'm pretty impressed with how Scratch lets you keep track of all those things for you. Like, in, in other computer languages, that could have been a very complicated thing to do, but I just clicked over, clicked delete, and it went away. So perfect. Oh, but now it says F. Uh, F. Go to E. All right, so stop. If I hit go now, oh, here's the thing. Yeah, check this out. I don't need this particular sprite to go. I need to make clones of all these things. So I want to move over, make it an H, and then I want to make a clone of that because we need that sprite to stay there. And now if we do this, let's see what happens. See if we get two letters now. There we go. And then, okay. So this is the basic pattern I think I'm gonna look for right here, which is this purple one, this blue one, this orange one. So it's gonna be H and then move it and then clone it and then set the letter to an E and then move it and then clone it. So let's do that. And now this is where we're gonna see the same pattern go a couple different times. Okay. so. I know, I know that this pattern is going to be the pattern that we're going to want to do. Can I duplicate that? Yeah, look at that. Okay. Now if I duplicate this, and now if I duplicate this, we're going to end up not duplicating it. I think we're going to end up making our own block that does this for us, but this will get us started kind of a little bit easier. So if I push this down here, there's H E L L M N O P. There you go. Oh, all right. Now it is he. Ah, got it. When I duplicated those set of blocks, it kept the same numbers in for each one. So because I duplicated the 10780 or negative 10780 XY coordinates, all the rest of them, all the letters stacked up on the same place. So we should be able to probably just move one and get some new numbers here. Minus 27. And this says minus 2781, but I'm gonna keep it 80 because that should keep the line, the, the bottom of the letters together. And you know, I moved it just a little bit up and down when I moved it. So we're gonna go with number, here, I'll try it about there. Minus 33 for the next one. Minus 33. And then the next one, wait. Oh, I moved the clone, which is not the actual active one. So I'm not seeing these numbers change. I need to move this one. There we go. 
only one. Yeah, there's there's really only one sprite. These other ones are clones, and you can't see the values for the clones. So there we go. Uh, so let's go 16. So we're no longer negative numbers. We're in the positive numbers. And then 91. Cool. So now if I hit stop and I hit go, there's our hello. It's maybe not the best lined up in the world, but that's fine. H-E-L. So H-E-L. So that's minus 33. Let's make this minus. I'm just going to guess right here and make this minus 38 and see if that gives us a little more, moves the letter a little bit to the left. So I think making the minus number bigger, we'll move it to the left. Yeah, there we go. So hello. I'm going to do the same thing with a O. So uh, this will be 87. Sure, why not? There we go. So this, this is what we want to basically see. Whoop, hello. Perfect. There's other things that I want to do. Like if I hit stop, I don't want this letter to show up. Oh, actually, we can go ahead and fix this. No, I'm, I'm going to leave this in for now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll show you what I want to have end up happening, which is if I hit stop, I don't want that letter to be there. I only want the clones to show up so that when I start the thing, we don't have the, the last letter showing up. I'm not going to worry about fixing that right now because that's going to add some more blocks in here that aren't really the blocks that we're focusing on at the moment. But this part is working. Now what I need to do is, so I could, I could do this, and I, I kind of did this in a first prototype where I could, I could do this basically exactly like this and for each letter, just write this exact same block. There's, there's some other things that I want to make the blocks do in terms of like moving and dancing a little bit that would require a whole bunch of duplication of blocks, which can be okay, but can also be kind of tedious and kind of a pain. And one of the things that programming is good to, for helping with is making some of that duplication go away. And so I'm going to try and focus on not doing that. And what I want to try and do now is make a single function that I can pass... Ooh, I think I'm going to have to pass both variables to it. Okay, yeah, so we're just going to we're gonna have to kind of YOLO for this and go for the whole thing, I think. I'm going to make two variables. And the first variable is going to be current... Let's do it this way. And the first variable is going to be current letter. I'm going to say for this sprite only, because each clone needs to have its own version of this letter. We don't have to worry too much about that right now, but that's just where it needs to be at the moment. And so also for the sprite only, we're going to do, um, I'm going to do X coordinate. I'm just going to say chord, T-O-R-D. No, X value. It's easier. Like value, it's an easier word for me to spell. X value. And then we're going to make three is what we're going to make, actually. And then Y value. Yeah, I kind of know what I want to do here. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to need these values. I'm making them a little bit ahead of time, but not too much ahead of time. And it's, 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 that's a, a dance you kind of have to figure out and you sometimes get wrong about making stuff too early. Um, it usually don't make it too late <laughs> because you end up making it at some point. It's just that you could have made it earlier. But like sometimes you make it earlier, you need it and end up not needing it. But I think we're going to need all these. So we're going to leave them in here. So the current letter and the X and Y values should give us this. Uh, you know what? Actually, I take that back. We're going we're gonna to drop the Y value for right now. We're only going to delete this. Delete there. My variable is also not really a thing. Delete day. There we go. Actually, I take that back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop all the way back. I, 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 I take back what I said. There's a thing in programming called premature optimization, where sometimes you make things so far in front of when you need them that you cause yourself more trouble than it's worth. So this, this is what we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with just the x value here, and the x value is this number. And so what I want to be able to do. Yeah, okay, I'm still having to think through this a little bit too. This is, this is very much a live build, but this will show you a little bit about how I think through these things. So I want to have a block. I need to make my own block here, and I'm going to call this letter maker. I'm going to do capital letters. No, letter maker, like this, letter maker. And then we want to add number or text, boolean, add a text label. Let's add a, that to it, because what we want to send to the, letter maker is x value and this is going to be a little bit of experimentation so i'm going to take this down and i'm going to clear this i'm going to turn this off uh let's let's get rid of some of these other things here that we don't need anymore do a little clean up so for letter maker now what we want to do i'm going to grab letter maker over here and we're going to switch so we're going to switch to our h and if i click this right now 
all so all we've done is we've moved that first H under this little block and it lets us kind of connect this up. So this, uh, like all this code really goes right there. It, it's the red blocks just let us move this over here, but then it also lets us loop over it, which we'll get to shortly. But for now, if we pass X value in here like this, if I pass this an X value of, I'm gonna do 100 and we'll see what happens. I think the H is gonna move over here to the right. Yeah, and now if we do minus 20, it's gonna go over there. What was our first one, minus 180? And so this, this is where we get to needing both of those variables. So I, 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 was, I wasn't too far off in the way that we're gonna need them. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in the second one because the, the two things that we need to have here, because I could, I could make this now do this. If I have this X value, all right, we're gonna walk through a couple of things here. This is gonna get a little complicated to start with, and then hopefully it'll get a little bit easier. So we want to, here's our X value up here. We wanna set that X value to start with to minus 180. So when I run this now, I'm gonna move this down here. The H isn't gonna move this time. All we're doing is we're setting this value to minus 180, which is what we wanna have this H have. So we're gonna take, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, take the X value itself from our little, uh, oval here and now we're sending this 180 into x value and then x value is right we're sending into letter maker and then letter maker takes that x value and puts it down here in this in this uh go to x y so like if we if we look at the jumps it basically goes from we're going to click start we're going to take this 180 and we're going to put it in x value and then X value, we're gonna put into the letter maker. And then as when letter maker, when we call the letter maker block, we're gonna take the X value that gets passed into it and push it down here into go to XY, and that should actually make it move. So now if I connect all this stuff up, what should happen is this H should jump back up here for us. Cool. Now, that's a lot more complicated than what we did down here. But what it should let us do is this. If now I set the X value to, one of, to minus 107, and then I just call letter maker again with the new X value, or sorry, it's still calling it with X value. We've just changed the value of what's inside the X. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call this, can I rename this? Rename, left, right, cool. So that's now our left, right variable. That's just gonna be a little bit easier for me to get my head around. So go to X. And then this needs to be, where's our definition here? Oops, can I reset this? Delete block, edit, edit. All right, let's call this left, right. There we go. So now our left, right value is minus 180. And we're sending to the letter maker, we're sending left, right, which goes into left, right here, which goes into left, right, which is the X value. There we go, okay, I like that better. That makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, cool, so if I move this down here, oh, oh yeah, and so now it's working, check this out. This is the, this is the first one, stop, I uh, go. Let's do two more of these. Let's actually, okay, let's actually push all these in for a second. So we've done 107, and now what we can do is we can duplicate this. Duplicate, how many letters are there? I feel like there's probably one more. So we've got 180, we've got 107, we've got minus 38, we've got 16 without the minus sign, and 87. I'm gonna move all this stuff over here for a second. Actually, I'm gonna just move it down there a little bit. We can get rid of that one, and that one. Now what happens? Okay, oh, we lost the 107, whoops. Duplicate this. Slot that right in there with minus 107 and bring this back down here. Oh wait, 87, there we go. Okay, right there, try that. Boop, okay, perfect. And it's perfect in terms of like, there are there are letters. So this, this is what we're gonna end up looking at, right? This is our last kind of target here. And this is a little bit easier to look at than all of this stuff. And it's gonna get you a little bit, but the, trick that we still don't have right now is even though we're moving all of our letters, we're sending the H the entire time. So we're just seeing the H the entire time. Now what we want to try and do is, I'm going to leave this down here, is we need to, we need to give it a different costume. So we're going to go edit our letter maker block again, and we're going to add an input number or text. So this is going to be letter. It may be letter number. Let me see how we get to the costumes because when we switch costumes, looks, 
I think the way that we need to switch costumes is by, yeah, we have to switch the costumes by either the name or the number down here. So this is the, this is the pillbox that we're looking for. All right, we're going to make a couple changes here because what I want to be able to do is in costumes, this is going to take a second, so I'm going to go through this pretty quick. Right now, this costume has a label of block A. I just want to do A, and then I just want to do B, and then I just want to do C. I'm going to do all those, and then I'll show you why we're doing that. Actually, we'll show you why we're doing that now. So if I go to this code, right now if I switch to costume, I would have to go, here's, here's exactly what we're looking for. As I start changing those labels, I can just say switch to costume A, B, C, D, as it compared to having to say switch to block E, block F, block G, block H. So we'll just run through and make all those happen now too. Okay, so we have them all now by letter. So if I, if I switch this down here to, oh, I don't know, A, and click run, we should see a whole bunch of A's happen. Awesome. And now if I go to G, here's a whole bunch of G's. And we have this letter value that we can pass in now. So in letter maker, if we do, how do we do, how do we just pass a letter? I think we're probably going to need to make it a variable. I'm just looking to see if there's another straight up value that we can use, but I think it just needs to be a variable and that's fine. So we're going to make this now, and now we're going to put letter in here. And again, for this sprite only and set left, right. And then we're going to set letter to H and here we're going to send in letter and we're going to send in letter to all of these things, which is going to stay H the entire time. But what should happen is we should see H happening now, right? Or not BRB. Ah, I see what I did. So I've got switch costume set to G explicitly here. So I can do to, to D and there we go. There's a D. What we need is back under looks down here, change costume. Wait, switch to costume. Wait, no, that's a variable. That's the existing one. Can we do this? Hang on. That shows us what the current number is, but we want to get to a specific number because the rounded ones are our variables. That's what gives us a value. We want to set the variable, which are the you know, squarish with the tab ones. Set size, change, next back bot, switch, switch costume to. Oh, this is tricky. We may not be able to do this. Surely not. Hmm. So which costume? Why can't I, I, what I'm looking for is the ability to change the costume to our variable number. And I'm not seeing the way to do that. Like this'll, this'll show me what it is. Set color, change. Those are all the effects. Set size, change size, backdrops, costume. And it doesn't have any variable number in there. I can't just drag that on, can I? Oh, well, look at that. Okay. I learned something today. That was non-obvious to me, but that's super cool. I thought I was looking for a little white hole thing here for switch costume, because I thought that was the only thing I was going to be able to drop the variable. Um, I don't know what we call these things, tab blocks, buttons in, but you can just do that. Okay. So now let's see what happens. H awesome. That's super cool. And it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so check this out. Now, if we do this, if we go back down to control, and by control, I mean variables. And we're, so we're going to 180 and H, and now we're gonna go to 107, and we wanna set the variable now to E, or YOLO this a little bit, and then, oh wait, what's the difference between, oh, change by and set to. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna like change it by incrementing it one or making it go up one. We just wanna explicitly set it to a new value. I'm going to switch these just a little bit so it's a little easier for me to read. I'm going to put first the letter and then the position. And then I'm take this out and set this out. And it's like this here. Whoops. Okay. And then this goes here. So what I want to have is I want to say the, the way that I want to think about this in my head is set H to negative 180. And then we make the letter. And then we're going to set E to minus 107. And then we're going to make the letter. Yeah, this is cool. You can pass variables this way. This is very neat. I like this. This is very cool. And here, this looks wrong somehow. Set, we don't need that twice. So I'm not really sure where that came from. We may find out in a minute if something doesn't work right. And we're gonna set, oh, sorry, set letter. Boop, and boop, H-E. Oh, that's where that thing was I just came. That was why I was confused. H-E-L-L-O. Uh, we can actually duplicate this one. 
Let's go duplicate this a couple times. Because we need an L and we need an O. So there's H, E, L, L, and here comes O. All right, let's see what happens. Whoop, hello. So this that we see right now doesn't look tremendously different from our original version. Actually, let me put this up here. I'm just gonna make a duplicate of this so we can see what we started with, right? So I made this an H. So this doesn't look that much different from what we had. But what this gives us hopefully the ability to do is to do some math across, the, across these in a way that'll let us do it in a more variable way. And that's gonna take a little bit to explain. But what we're going to want to do is this 180 is actually going to end up showing up in here, which if that doesn't make sense, that is because I'm not explaining it very well at all. And I'm not sure how to explain it other than to do it and show it to you. This will also be the first time that I've tried to do this particular approach in Scratch, so it may be a little bumpy. Enjoy the ride. Programming often is bumpy. Good times. So the way that we're going to approach this is right now I'm sending the value 180, 107, et cetera, into each one of these things. In fact, oh, actually here's, here's an optimization that we can do just to start with. This left, right, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this even though it's not gonna be where we're gonna end up, but it's gonna show a little bit about how we go through a process of making things a little bit refined. Because if I do this, oh, actually, whoa, okay, I just something just totally occurred to me. These don't need to be variables out here. Watch this. I, I'm thinking, through, like I'm kind of thinking through to the next step already, which sometimes is okay and sometimes gets you in trouble. H, E, L, L, O. And then it's 180 minus, minus 107 minus 38, which I'm just gonna call 40 now because I'm gonna make that 110 just because, I don't know, it's easier to, like they'll be, Shifty a little bit, it's fine. This will, be my, uh, this will be 20 and 90. Those are values just easier for me to get my head around. And like, I'm not worried about like the spacing really in the design of it at the moment. We can figure that out later, but check this out. So if we do this, there's hello. So now what we just did makes a little bit more sense and a little bit more progress. So our first version, uh, let's clean up the stuff that's no longer being used, which is all of this stuff. So this is our first version right here. And this is our second version right here, which is a lot easier to get our heads around because, and we're taking out, we're not doing, we're not dealing with the, with the Y values right now. That's fine. We can, we can actually add that in just so it's as consistent. So we can go ahead, let's go ahead and do that just so we're doing an apples to apples comparison. So here we're going to take, unless it doesn't let me, does it let me move them? No. Okay. I'm not. Oh, actually, we can just do this. Uh, letter, letter, left, right, and then add in, put a text, up, down. Click OK. And then we need to switch this because we just move those variables. Uh, so variables are what we're, we're passing in to these things here. Or actually, they're parameters or arguments, depending on how you call it. It's what you, when we call the block, when we run the block or use the block, these values that we're putting in here, the 180, the H, the minus 110, the E, et cetera. In different languages, they're called different things. I actually don't know what they call them specifically in Scratch. It's probably either arguments or parameters. Um, but that's what, it's basically it's the value that we want to send in to the kind of template block that then takes whatever we send into it and uses those template values to actually stamp things out. And I'll talk more about that really, really explicitly in another video. But this is, this'll, this is like the practical usage of how this stuff works. Uh, and so for up, down, now I'm just gonna put 80 in here for all these. And we need to reverse these. So this needs to be minus 180. This will take just a second. I, I don't mind spending a little time cleaning up the way that I have my arguments, my parameters set up, like doing this move. Like I could have, I could have kept it as left, right, and then the letter, left, right, and then the letter, and then up, down. But that puts the, the, the numbers around the letter and it's easier for me to think about the letter and then the numbers so i'm okay spending a little time changing that up so that it looks like this because now if i just look down this line i see hello and then these are the values that it goes in and now if i run this we should see the same thing it should do the same thing boop there we go 
Oops, no. Why? Oh, because I'm running it twice. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm gonna take I'm gonna disconnect this one. There you go. Hello. Uh let's put this back down here. Actually, let's do this. Can we move this all the way down? Just to get it completely off screen. What happens if I do that? Now. So this this is this is pretty clean. I like this a lot. So the next thing that I want to be able to do is I don't want to have to have me put in the values for these numbers. This 180, this 110, this minus 140, this 20, this 90. The, the end goal is I just want to be able to say create H-E-L-L-O and have it say hello and have it figure out where to do the spacing. So the way that I'm going to run that is by using a variable, a new variable. And this new variable, we're going to call... Ooh, we actually don't use those, do we? Yeah, we don't use these. These go away. Delete eight uses of left, right. Yes, we aren't actually using that. That's fine. Make for, oh, make a list. <gasps> There's lists? No way. Okay, we're going to play with that in a minute. I don't, I've never used the list before. I literally didn't see that until right now. I'm not going to play with that right now. I'm going to stay on, I'm going to stay on target here for a minute. <clears throat> but we're going to play with that because that might be even cooler. Or not even cooler, but a next, an, an next, next level cool, which I guess would be even cooler. Where was I? We're going to make a new variable. This is going to be for all sprites because this sprite, so the, when we do for individual sprites, that means that like H would get its own version of the variable. E would get its own version of the variable. L, L, O would get their own versions. That's, a, I'm not explaining that well. I will, I will do another specific video on that. So if that really poor explanation didn't make sense, that's on me and we'll, we'll address that soon. But for now, the big thing to know is what we want to have happen is for all sprites for this one. And we actually have to put a variable name here. And this is going to be letter position. Or letter, actually, we're going to call this letter left, right. Global left, right. Mm, current left, right. How about that? Current left, right. Because we have a left, right for each letter that we're assigning here. And what I want to do is keep track of what the current one is so that when I call another letter, I can make an adjustment off of it of the current value and then use that. And here's how that's gonna work a little bit. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna intentionally do something here that's gonna make it not work as great and then deal with it from there. So actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, so here's the thing. I'm gonna try to do something that I do in other programming languages, which is I have this thing working right now in terms of like it's saying hello in the way that I want it to say hello. What I'm seeing right there, like I, that, like I, could, I could, as I say, ship that. I could, I could send that out and have that do what I want to do. It's, it takes more setup than I want to have, so I'm trying to make the setup easier, but it, this does the thing, like this is it. So as I'm working through this next step, I want, to, I want to make sure that it continues to do the thing instead of messing around with it in a way that breaks it and then trying to reassemble it. So how that's going to look for me right now is I want to switch over to using this current left-right variable, and that's going to go in this left-right position. And just to show it not working the way that we specifically want it to, we're going to do this. Um, actually, we can, we can start actually at the end. So I do need to see it break once. So to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this current left, right, and I'm going to put this ooh, here. Actually, no. Hang on. Do, 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 do. I was incorrect. We should put this up here. This should, this should not work great. All the letters are just going to stack because... The, we're, it's no longer using the value that we're sending in as the parameter or as the argument. It's using this global current left, right here, right? It's using this top level one, which is zero. If I set that one to 100, or sorry, let's set it to one, minus 180, because that's what our first number is going to be. You'll, we'll, we'll see the, this is the readout of it. And then this is, which, so that readout can either show up or not show up, depending on if we click this flag. It just makes it easier to see while you're programming what's there. Like when, you're, when you run it for real, you don't want to see that. For us, now it's at 180. Now check this out. We can call set again and do to 110 minus 110 and run that. And now it's moving over. So I'm putting, I'm basically, I'm taking the number that we were sending over individually to each one. So like this, this line up, this line goes directly into this line as compared to this line, which hangs out up here so that when we call it, from current line here, it calls this number instead of like getting the number that's passed inside of it. Again, not the greatest explanation. We'll work on specific videos to make that a little bit more clear. For now, let's just roll with it. So what we want to do, I'm going to finish all these out because I want to, I want to get it working again. So I, I, I needed to get it into a little bit of a broken state in order to like, you can, it's, it's usually 
very hard to make it completely work the same all the time. But I want to get back to as working as possible. I want to get, I want to stay as close to that functionality being actually functional as possible. So we're going to run this. This is going to be minus 40. We're going to run this as minus 20, which is not 200, but it's also not a minus. And this is going to be 90. Okay. So now if I run this, hopefully it shows up. Boop. Hello. Awesome. Now here's what's, here's the thing that we've just done. We've duplicated these values, but what that means is if we go, can I delete values here? Edit. Oh, I can do it. So I want to try, yeah, I'm going to delete this left, right. Boop. Well, a bunch of stuff just went away. Kind of scared me. But so I took out that value now. And if I run this, it still works. So this is cool. We added some lines back in here. Like this, this got longer because it was just the, the, let, the let, uh, letter maker. And now we've added this up above it. But what that set us up to do is this. If we start with minus 180, when we make a new letter, we can do this. Oh, we're going to set this value now. Here, let's, I'm going to go back to this. So we've seen that it does what we needed to do. And now this isn't going to work again properly because we're not setting the values in. But again, we need to, we need to see it. We've got we to break it just a little bit. So the first letter is going in its right place. But now we need to have the, the rest of the letters show up in the right place. And we can do that now in this function, in this block, like this. So we want to set... Sorry, we want to change the current value of current left, right. Uh, who remembers how many it was? 80? 60? I'm going to guess a number now. Hello. There you go. So that's kind of cool. What's happening now is we set this, we set this current value, this current left, right value to 108, to minus 180 at the start of when we hit the click, right? So there we go. And when we call the first letter maker, we're no longer passing in that value. It's just out, it's up here hanging out and the, the letter maker can actually go grab this value. So that's exactly what it does. It switches to the right letter that we want to send in. So in this case, the H, and then it goes and grabs the value, the current, current left, right value, which is minus 180 in this case, and it makes the clone. So we do that, boop, there's our H. The next thing it does is it adds 60 to that value. So it goes from negative 180 to negative 120. That means that right here, it's the same thing as if we did this minus 120, minus 120. But we don't have to put this line here because this line did that for us automatically. So that when we call this next one, this is going to be at minus 120 or 60, whatever the math is 180, 60, click. Something's weird. No, minus 60. Okay, there we go. Same thing through next time. This could have been minus whatever. Let's actually put the right letter on there. Yep. Get, make the letter, grab the current position, clone the letter to, to stamp it in, and then increment the counter. Move it up so it's ready for the next one. Keep going, keep going. Now, how this gets interesting is this. There's a minor, there's a minor bummer here that I'm about to run into, and I, I can already see it coming, but um, that's fine. Oh, we don't need, you know what? Hang on. Let's, yeah, let's actually, let's actually bounce this down just a little bit. I'm actually, I'm going to, so this is working pretty good right now. I'm going to save this file off to my computer just so I've got a copy of it in this state in case, so I can get back to it if I need to get to back to it or take that one away. And here, let's go edit this again, right? Cause we actually don't need up, down, delete. Okay. So there's hello, H-E-L-L-O, boop, hello. Now this is where it gets fun. If I take that away and I just do, instead of hello, let's say I just wanted to do hi, hi. And then what if I wanted to say welcome, W-E-L-C-O-M-E. -E. So welcome has two more letters. That's how you spell welcome, right? We're going to find out. Boop. Welcome. So I didn't have to figure out the math for how to add in those new positions for me. I'm just adding 60 every time, which some letters are narrower than others. Like if we do an E and an I, or if we do a W and an I, and then a W or a couple W's and a couple I's. This is just not a word. But the W's overlap on themselves and the I's don't because I is a thinner character. And we're not, we're always, we're, make, we're giving air, every character 60 units of space. So like W mostly fits in that. I has lots of space on the sides of it. So there's not a, if you're, if you're working with fonts, 
and maybe we get into this in a later version. In fact, we almost certainly will, where we actually address, like, if it's a W, I want the W to have a width here, a, a left-right value of 60, but I want I only to have 40 so that things space out a little bit nicer. But for right now, for this first version of this, like, this is fine. Because, like, if I was going to... If I was going to space this like by hand, that's what I would do versus that. This gets us going. So if we do welcome again and run it, there's our welcome. Now there is, there is this, and this is great. This is perfect. Like, okay, so I'm definitely saving this. This is, this is the, this is 100% the first thing that I'm looking for. Just being able to run this. Cause now I can do other things like this, where if I wanted to like, uh, I don't know, Check us out. Let's, let's just do a quick one to show a little bit about how this is going to go. So we're going to start this actually at a random position and create a clone. Uh, here, we're going to do this a little bit differently. Oh, look at that. I was just hanging out right back there, and I never saw it. We're going to go to a random position and then create the clone. So we'll still see welcome. It's just going to be all over the place. Boop. Cool. Boop. Cool. 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 Now, if we do glide to over one second, and this is cool. I, I really, I just, I think this is going to work, right? If I do, oh, random position. Wait, can we give it a specific position? Aha, whoops, okay. I got the wrong one. Glide to there, and then we want to grab current position. Let's grab this from here. Nope. Current position and 80 over one second and clone. Check this out. I guess that's a little, that's a little slow. Maybe, maybe make it a little faster. Welcome. See, look at that. The having having the block over here so that I can just change this one block or these two blocks and have it affect all of the letters is is one of the big uh, helpful things that these custom blocks can do that lets you instead of having to copy and paste the things or re or just duplicate them all over the place just apply it in one place and have it affect all of them because like it's it's not. It's not a huge deal if I had if I had like two letters and I wanted to just do the same change to both of them. But like if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters, like that's kind of it, it gets it gets tedious. Like it just gets tedious. There's no two ways about it. But now we can bring this in here and all of a sudden we've got something. I mean, that's kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. I, I didn't I wasn't I wasn't sure on what I was gonna do with this, but like I'm pretty happy with that. Now, next up lines and what do i mean by lines well this x this y value this this up down value for y has been 80 this entire time and that's cool and all up to a point because what's about to happen is if i duplicate some letters out here let's put this up here and let's just do uh i'm gonna do a's so we can see the a's oh well you can already see it we ran out of space because we don't have anything in here to let scratch know like, it's just going to keep adding 60 forever. Like, the letters can't go any farther than that, so they stack up at the end, at the edge of the screen. So they're all there. Like, I could probably pull them down, right? There's, there's all our A's. But it'd be much nicer if they actually went to where we needed to have them show up. So how do we do that? This is where we need to adjust this, this Y value, uh, the up-down value. So I'm gonna pull this back out first. Actually, no, I'm gonna leave this here. We can just leave this here. Oh, I don't have a space. I don't need a space yet, so I'm not gonna worry about a space. At, at some point, I'm gonna to have to make a space version of this too. But like, I'll, I'm gonna do like hello and world, and the line is gonna be the break. So, oh, or is it? Ooh, interesting. Oh no. See, there's there's some there's some complexity here because if I have if I was gonna do hello world. H E L L O. I don't have a space, so I'm going to do X W O R L L world. <laughs> yeah, this is tricky. So if the X is a space, I'm going to, I can't take the X out right now. Mm, I don't have a good way to put a space there. But what I would want to have happen is my, my, my original idea was oh, I could just look at the value of current left, right. And if it hits the end of the screen, wrap to the next line. The, the trick with that is, if in our Hello World example, we'd be H-E-L-L-O, pretend the X is a space, and then W, and then it would wrap. But that would put the W 
on the top line and an ORLD on the second line, which is not really, you know, how language works. So what we'd need to do is have it actually do some calculation to figure out if you were in a word. So we would need to create the concept of a word in here instead of just letters, which I think is actually our next step. Because then what we can do is just for each word, we can put each word on its own line. All right, so check this out. I'm gonna do this, there's, there's multiple ways that we could do this. The way that I'm gonna run it right now is I'm gonna duplicate some stuff. We are going to, well, kind of. Hmm. Okay, let me think through this. Cause what, here's, here's what I want. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start at the end and then work my way forwards or backwards or something. I don't know, whichever direction that goes. But here's hello. So this should work, right? This gives us what we want. So what I could do is this to start with. This is going to put it in the wrong place. But if our goal is to say hello world, I expect this is going to be on the wrong line. Oh, no, they're still duplicating. These are all still using the same value. Ah, oh, got it. Okay. So what we really need. So, okay, what's happening here is I set this global value, right? Uh, sorry, I set this global value once, variable once which is up here. And then I'm running this, I'm running this process of letter maker for both of these words, for both hello and for world. And the trick with that is each one of those is adjusting this global variable. Like if I take, if I take this out, that global variable ends up at 120. But when I add this word back in, it ends up at 420. And like these things are kind of spaced all over the place because it's, it's, Jumping is like whichever one happens to get there first over here, it makes that one go or whatever. And it, that's also why, so H and W and O and R, W, like they're all out of letters and all out of spaces because they're all like racing against each other, basically. And sometimes one wins, sometimes the other wins. So we can solve part of that by doing this. If we go back to variables down here, we're going to set the current variable. And I'm going to minus 180 again and then run this. This should put hello and world over top of each other. Hello world, there we go, okay. So this is, this, like, this is actually a lot of progress. The thing that we wanna have happen now is we need to bring in that concept of the current up down. Oh, this is actually, oh, okay, this is actually more straightforward than I thought, okay. I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm, seeing a, I'm seeing a nice little path here, I think. So we're doing the calculations to move the letters from left to right, and we do need to do some math there, because every time we put a letter, we need to do it for this. I think what we can do is do current up down again, globally, not just for that sprite and set. I'm going to set this at 80, right? Cause we want to have this. And now we're going to pull that current up down into here. Actually, if I don't set it, let's just, just watch what happens. if We don't set it and see what it, we'll see what it does. So I'll take it off for a second. So we've created the variable, but it's at zero now. So I think what's going to happen is this hello world's going to move down into this middle line. Yeah. But, this is cool because if I take this and set current left, right to 80, not 800, 80, what? Oh, I see what's happening. I'm not setting current left, right is 120. That is because I'm setting this incorrectly. There we go. Okay. Try now. There we go. Okay. I, I was setting the wrong variable. That is the thing that happens kind of frequently. There we go. Okay. Now check this out. So we do that and then we do set. And then we remember to change it to up down this time. And let's just set this. I guess we'll just set it to zero and see what happens. Hello world. There you go. Uh, let's give it like a minus 10. Just to get a little more. Or minus 20. Give it a little more spacing. Boop. Cool. That's that's pretty good. So I, I, I kind of. I was thinking I was going to need to kind of come up with the concept of a word. Or like a way to like batch a word or group a word. Or like get, get them all together. And like maybe there's a letter maker. And then there's a word maker on top of that. And it would have to do some stuff to figure out if it was at the end of the line. But for now, easier, especially because it's so like for my, for the, for the thing that I'm trying to do, which is just to make these, these uh, title uh, texts cards, this is like, this is fine. I can, I can just, for every time I need to make a position or start a word or do a thing, I can just do it. And oh, the other thing we actually do, we could actually add some spaces here. Oh, check this out too. Okay, this is interesting. The, so the W is a little bit to the left of H for hello. It would be like if I was if I was gonna put on like a designer hat, I'd want this H to be a little bit farther over, or more to the point the W to be farther over to the right. 
So I can actually just do that now, right? Because if, if we're controlling the left right here and I move this to 160, actually, I'm going to do it pretty far. I'm going to do it to like 100 just to see it like really shift. Hello world. Oh, actually, that's pretty cool too. I like that. Oh, I really like that. All right, I'm going to make these variable names go away for a second. Okay, I am actually really happy with that. I'm going to, and okay, this is going to get into the point of now it's just kind of a little bit of a, what I would call a design exercise where it's just like, I want to tweak some stuff in terms of the numbers. So like I want, I want each, I want hello and world both to shift over to the right a little bit. So I'm just going to move each one of them to the right a little bit by shifting the numbers, which it's the negatives and the positives. And sometimes that stuff confuses me. So I make it this backwards, but we do that and then run that. Hello world. See, that's, that's a little more centered. And then I want them down a little bit. So if this is 80, Let's go to 70, not 700. And if that's minus 30, is that the right way? I don't know. We'll find out. That's pretty good. Okay. I'm very happy with that. I'm really happy with that. There's a bunch, there's a bunch of other things that I'm going to want to do with this, but like for a, for a, actually even a kind of a second version, because we kind of had a first version. Now this is really the first version, right? Cause this is, this is a version that lets us do multiple words and I could do, I could do, I could add a third word here just by duplicating this. Oh, check this out, actually. Yeah, we can even do this. So current left, right. I'm going to do whatever. I'm going to leave it at minus 80. I'm going to put this at minus 80, minus 90. And then we're going to do this. So I was talking about needing a space earlier. We kind of have one now, or we kind of have the capability of making one. Oops, delete 49 blocks. That seems like a bad idea. Delete block, delete block, delete block. Okay, duplicate. Minus 80. And if I make this a minus... 40 minus 30 and then we make one more here well so let's just do this what we should see is this should give us an a and a b on the next line okay it did they're not spaced right current up down 90 so let's move that to minus 110 minus 110 110 minus 110 and then this we're going to go to minus so if that was at minus 80 but let's just do it at like 10 i'm just kind of guessing numbers here but what i'm looking to see is like can we add a space in there and we can so if i do this it's like 30 and this is just experimenting to feel like putting it, putting in numbers. And if it goes the right way, you use that number. If not, you make it either higher or lower, but that's how we can do spaces. So like this still isn't this, this still has to have a little bit of handholding for putting in the, the programming for how you want to like have stuff run. And it's not jumping lines for us automatically, but like we can, we can output a line or a part of a line with some spaces in it pretty directly now and that's pretty cool like that's that's gonna let me do the title cards um, and then the last thing that i could do here is the si so let's do two last things here i want to i want to set so like this is <laughs> this number only exists in one place this is the amount to move and I could just change it here, but really I want that in a variable because I like the idea that the that I don't have to mess with anything in this block of code to make changes. I want all of my changes to be over here. So if I want the, for example, the size, which we're about to do, and the distance of the letters to change, I want that to be something that I do completely in this line here. And this this block will just stay the same the whole time. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about the glide. Like that's gonna be fine for now. No, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and actually we're gonna move all the things over. We're gonna make very we're gonna make a fully a fully configured thing. So we need two more variables. We need a glide variable and we need a current or we need a next what do we want to call it? We're gonna call this current. We're gonna call this glide time for the first one. That one's be a little easier to think of. And so we're gonna move glide time in right here and let's go get set glide time 0.1. Now, last one is this. What do we want to call this variable? Uh, make that go away so we don't see it. We want to call this um, letter spacing. And we're going to grab letter spacing. Cut. So theoretically, it's the space between letters, but it's really the space the letters take up. It's not the right technical term, but it'll, we know what it means. So if I do this, now if I do letter spacing, if, so check this out. If I do this in 10, the letters are going to mush together. If I do this as 30, they'll overlap some, but not awful. Well, maybe a little awful. How about 40? What's 40 look like? Hello world. See, that's not bad. I'm gonna get rid of this AB though. That was just for a test. We don't need that. Delete the whoops. Can I not delete the whole oh wait, I can just drag it off. I forgot. I forgot how scratch works. Um okay. So there's that. 
And then 60 is what we had originally. But where this becomes a little bit interesting is it gives me another capability now, which is I can add one more variable called letter size. And we're going to set. So I'm going to put these in this order. Letter size. Whoops. Okay, that's right. Doop, 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 doop. Letter size. And we're going to run this. I could. So here's, here's, here's the thing that I could do. But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it a slightly different way. So for looks, if I set size to 50, 50%. And run this. So like letter size, we're not using letter size yet. I'm going to take it out. But the reason I wanted this letter spacing in here is because if I move the letter size down, I also want to move the spacing back so that things fit or so that the letters move close to each other. And I would need to, ooh, well, okay. I could, ma I'm going to manually adjust the height or the length between words or whatever. That's fine. Um, I don't have a, it's going to take some math to make those happen automatically, which is fine. I just, I'm not sure the approach that I want to use to do that yet. And I want to, I want to play with it a little bit more before I make that decision. So I'm going to, I'm going to push that decision down the road a little bit. I could just leave this here as set 50%, but I really like this idea of moving this over here. Like everything in the letters I want to have be a configured thing. And then we grab letter size down here in variables and put it over here. So this is basically doing the same thing. I'm just explicitly setting it for every letter. And then I really just like this clean kind of top level of I set the letter size. Oh, actually, what's that going to do? Ah, yep, that's zero. Maybe I should put a number there. Like, I don't know, 20. Actually, let's do 150, 150%. Letter spacing 30. This is going to definitely overwrap, overwrap each other. There we go. 90. Whoop. Hello, world. Ran out of space. If we do it at 70. What happens? Do we make it? Hello, world. See? Okay. I think we're in pretty good shape there. And there's all, there's all kinds of extra stuff that we could be adding in here that's going to be kind of fun to play with. But this, this, is, this is the thing that I'm, I'm after, or that I was after at, when I first started this, is this block, which this is, like, this is the entire program. Like, this, this little bit of code does all of this, makes all of that happen. And, like, it's, that's a little bit of one of those kind of mind-blowing things to me about how kind of powerful some of this stuff can be when you can start pulling some of the more advanced concepts of, of programming and scratch and, and different programming languages into this so that you can get the computer to do the over and over and over things for you itself. And you just feed it a few variables or a few parameters or a few arguments and settings. And then it just does all the stuff for you. And like, I think that's super cool. So that's the first version of this. Uh, I'm in, I'm in really happy with the way that this is looking up. Our, I'm, I'm really happy with this way this is looking. So this will be an ongoing project. I'm going to continue to work on this. I think this will be a fun one to mess with and play with over time. But it works. Like, this is version one. And like this is, maybe this actually is even version two, right? Because we added some sizing. We've added some extra lines, et cetera. It's, whatever it is, it's in good shape, and it's what we're going to be using. So we'll continue to play with it over time. But for now, I think that gets us to a pretty good stopping point. I'm going to make another video showing a kind of a step-by-step -step of how to build this specifically. This was the actual building of it. Like this was actually me doing the thing. We'll do a much more refined video where it's like, okay, we know what we want to build. Now let's go through the steps of how we want to build it and talk about that a little bit in a little bit of a different light. Um, I think those are going to be two different ways that we run these videos. I think it's going to be kind of helpful to have. Sometimes you see the actual me not knowing that's happening. And then sometimes it's like, oh, I already know what I'm going to do. And like, this is just doing it. So hope you all had a good one. I think this has been fun. I'm really looking forward to playing with this. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. See you. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. Peace.